In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, a spirit of always pondering on what is right and of hastening to carry it out. And since without you we cannot exist, may we be enabled to live according to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Esther. Queen Esther, seized with mortal anguish, had recourse to the Lord. She lay prostrate upon the ground together with her handmaids from morning until evening and said, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, blessed are you. Help me who am alone and have no help but you, for I am taking my life in my hand. As a child, I used to hear from the books of my forefathers that you, O Lord, always free those who are pleasing to you. Now help me, who am alone and have no one but you, O Lord my God. And now come to help me, an orphan. Put in my mouth persuasive words in the presence of the lion, and turn his heart to hatred of our enemy, so that he and those who are in league with him may perish. Save us from the hand of our enemies. Turn our mourning into gladness and our sorrows into wholeness. The word of the Lord. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for your help, you answered me. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A clean heart create for me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which one of you would hand his son a stone when he asks for a lo- when he asks for a loaf of bread, or a snake when he asked for a fish? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. I suppose a little background is necessary here for this first reading because it's taken out of context and we maybe lose some of uh, what's going on in this reading by not having that background to help us. Of course, we we probably would have had to read most of the book to get off the background, so I'll distill it down for you, just something something very quick here. Um, uh, uh, the queen has, is in mortal anguish because her life is being threatened. What has happened is that uh, uh, someone has convinced the king that they need to exterminate all of the Israelites. They need to get rid of them. And Esther is one of them. And here she is in this, uh, in this horrible predicament. Also, she is not permitted to go see the king unannounced or uninvited. So she's going to do something contrary to the law. She's going to go and appeal to her husband, the king, and uh, for her people. But she's not permitted to do that. And so she risks her own life even uh, in that action of doing that. Now, you have to read the rest of the book if you want to see how it comes out. I'm not going to give that part of it away. Um, it's a short book, though. You can read it in almost in no time. It goes by pretty quickly. So here she is making this appeal. And so um, what I think is really important in this reading is the way that she prays. She believes that, first of all, that the Lord can do this. She knows that God can do this. She, she says, I've read in my forefathers' books, Lord, oh, the Lord always frees those who are pleasing to you. And so she asks for his help. She asks in a way that she be pleasing to the Lord and that, and that she, um, she receive the answer to the prayer that she's, she's asking to spare her, to spare her people in this time. And it begins not just with her asking the Lord for something, she acknowledges who the Lord is first, and that's a good thing for us to do in our own prayer. She says, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, blessed are you. So there's that acknowledgement at the beginning. It's, it, of course, uh, I suppose in a hurried situation or in an urgent situation, we would not think of, of doing that. We would just go directly to what we want the Lord to do and what we need help with. But it is always good to start in that way. And that's modeled really in the Lord's Prayer, where we begin uh, recognizing our relationship with God, our Father. It's a good place, a good place to start. And to, um, we say, hallowed be thy name, and she says, blessed are you. Good ways to begin prayer, to begin our prayer. And then she asks, she asks, and she is confident again that the Lord will answer her prayer. And that is also an aspect of our prayer that must be there. We're not just throwing up something, hoping that, you know, or or just hope against hope or something that God will respond to it. God hears all of our prayers. We know that the Lord will answer. He may not answer in the way that we want. He may not answer when we want. But But God will answer our prayers. We can be assured of that. And so she has that confidence. So having that confidence in in prayer is important. What Jesus tells us, another aspect that should be supporting our prayer, is this recognition that God is good. And so we should not expect him to respond in a way that's bad for us. He will always respond in a way that is 
good to us. And so he says, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. We should, and again, we should do that with confidence, knowing that the Lord is good and that we're asking a good Lord, a good God, to answer our prayers. This is a, a, and this I get, can support us again. But I suppose I must include some caveats not included in the, in the readings for today about prayer because prayer is a difficult thing for us to do. It's a difficult thing at times for us to trust that the Lord is going to do something good. We don't know how the Lord will respond. And we know that our prayer is not going to change God's mind and make him do something that he doesn't want to do or contrary to what his will is. Prayer helps us align with his will. And along with that, we have to recognize that what we are doing is opening ourselves to the Lord and allowing him to answer in the way that he answers wanting him to be a part of our lives, not alienating ourselves from him, but knowing that he is always good and he will bring goodness to us. Now, we know that God does not work on our schedule. He works on his schedule. And that uh, this friend in, uh, in Charlotte, uh, when I first, that I met when I first moved to Charlotte, and he used to keep a prayer journal. He used to write everything down that he prayed for, and then he would go back and fill in the way the prayer was answered. But he, always, he would always tell me God answers prayers in three ways, yes, no, and not yet. And the not yet one is the hard one for us to accept because we're waiting and waiting and hoping that the Lord will answer and we'll do it quickly, but the Lord answers in his own time. So when we pray, we have to be ready for that. We have to be ready for a response maybe is that is not the one that we would like. But accept that response knowing that it is the Lord's will and that it is something good, something good for us, though it may still involve suffering on our part. It may be a difficult thing to hear. It may be something that is calling us to do something that we don't find pleasant or that we don't really want to do, but that we know is the Lord's will and we know that we need to do it. The uh, gospel section ends with something that is not really related to prayer, but more related to action. And again, it's the, it's the golden rule, do to others what you would have them do to you. But what Jesus says in this particular passage, which is, I think, important, he says, this is the law and the prophets. What is interesting in that is he's, he's really summing up all of the law and all that's been said in the Old Testament, all in just this one saying. And it reminds me that Christianity is not a difficult concept to understand. It's something that can be said in a very few words, just like this. Or as we've heard before, love God and love your neighbor. Very simple thing to say, very simple thing to remember. Now the doing of it is much more difficult, obviously. And that's why we're here. That's why we come back to the Lord again and again and again in prayer and in this best form of prayer, which is the celebration of the Mass. We keep coming back. We keep asking for the Lord's help. We do that again and again and again. And we wait for him to respond. We wait and we're open and we're ready for the response when it comes. We expect a response. We know that the Lord will respond to us. We know that. And so prayer has that aspect of expectation as well. But it is going to require some act, some work on our part. And so we come to the Lord today and we ask for that strength in this particular Eucharist that, that uh, even this celebration today may help us, may be a step toward accepting his will more, towards um, offering the right form of prayer, towards um, accepting his response to our prayers. So let's pray. Uh, we offer the Mass today uh, in memory of Anita de Salvo. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we continue our uh, special prayers for Helen Self. 
for Mary Ann, for Justin Whalen, for uh, John Bell, um, who is under hospice care now. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for uh, Marge Turco, who uh, was in the hospital yesterday. We hope that she'll be released soon. We pray to the Lord. And we continue to pray our prayers for comfort and healing for Lillian Coto, uh, Brandon, Marie, Jane Benedetto, Anthony Settle, Madison Placencia, Christine Williams, Karen Metcalf, Jimmy Dean Paris, Sandra and Gary Coggins, Sherry Riley, Jerry Brower, and Jean Marr. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the people of Ukraine that through the intercession of Mary, Queen of Peace, their country will soon have a free and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for families. May God pour out an abundance of grace to every family in the diocese that they may be domestic churches and dwellings of loving sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the church that we may be witnesses of living in God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Any other prayers you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay, let's close our prayers with the 50th anniversary prayer. Heavenly Father, accept our humble prayer of praise and gratitude as we joyfully celebrate 50 years as the Diocese of Charlotte. Throughout our history, the faithful of Western North Carolina, under the watchful care of esteemed bishops and abbots, have been nurtured by your providential care. And confident that you invite your children to implore your constant blessings, we pray that you continue to pour forth your heavenly grace upon us. With filial affection and devotion, we further ask that you look kindly upon the prayers we seek through the intercession of our venerable patroness, the most blessed Virgin Mary, who with motherly attention tends to the needs and concerns of the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be merciful, O Lord, to those who approach you in supplication. 
and accepting the oblations and prayers of your people, turn the hearts of us all towards you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, <clears throat> your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
ask, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord our God, that as you have given these most sacred mysteries to be the safeguard of our salvation, so you may make them a healing remedy for us, both now and in time to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May the mercy they have hoped for, O Lord, come to those who make supplication to you. And may the riches of heaven be given them, that they may know what is right to ask and receive what they have sought. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>